Welcome to the Security Speakeasy Show, where we talk all things network security. Today, we're going to look into cybersecurity trends within the retail industry. My name is Mohit, and I'm on the marketing team at Pulse Networks. Joining me today is Amit Chital, who's been in the industry for about almost close to 20 years. Hey, Amit, welcome to the show. Hey, Mohit, thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you know, as a result of COVID-19 and the pandemic, global online retail sales have like skyrocketed in 2020 because more consumers are now shopping online. And we know that they're still spending money and their shopping habits have shifted to online. And the need for this has increased as well. So retailers need to be ready for these various technology trends and advances to keep their businesses safe from the impact of cybersecurity risks. And that's why I'm here talking to you to get your, to get your advice. So let's start off from the very top, right? Like what's your definition of a retailer and why is it important for them to adapt to this digital transformation? Yeah, so you touched on it. When you think about retail, right? Anyone who's selling products or goods at services at scale, it's completely shifted in the last, not only like the last couple of years prior to that, but more specifically the last couple of years. You know, one, you think about this as consumers' expectations have changed. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a Gen X, Gen Y, whether you're older generation, young, we all have different expectations to shop. We want things fast. We want things you know, easy. We want the product, how we want it, when we want it, where we want it, specifically in the channel of the choice. You know, when we say channel, we mean it could be online to your house. It could be on your mobile device. It could be, buy, you know, something called buy in line pickup at store or buy in line pickup at curb. Making things easy for that new consumer is certainly the trend. And that's what retailers are trying to figure out. That's where they had to focus their efforts on serving any channel anywhere. The second thing you, that we're seeing, and you mentioned this too, is, you know, the the the, the e-commerce or the, you know the dot com, you know, has strategy has increased too for these re- like, fifty percent on average of retailers are seeing their sales through those channels. Mm-hmm. So not only has the consumer expectation has changed, that channel has forced retailers to serve the consumer in a different way. And when you think about that too, it's, you know, how are they doing that? Like, how are they doing this e-commerce and how are they doing at scale? Well, they're trying to put a lot more emphasis in the cloud with burstability. So when you think about consumers' expectations chain, alongside with that, e-commerce has to change. But because of that, they had to put a lot more in cloud and cloud investments to deal with that, that, that trend. So I mean, guess what I just found out? I found out that POS attacks account for 64% of data breaches within retailers. And that's a pretty big deal because everyone uses some point of sale or another. And I wanted to ask, what are you seeing within retailers and the industry as a whole today? Yeah, no, clearly point of sale is a bread and butter for every retailer out there. And it's important to think about how you're securing that, how you're putting end-to-end security and encryption with respect. But you really need to think about how that landscape has changed, where the threat has changed, right? It's not just a brick and it's not just a machine in a store anymore, right? Consumers' expectations have changed. We want to shop how we want it, where we want it, when we want it. COVID has forced us to have so many different you know, ways to shop, whether it's shipped to your house, whether it's shipped to your store, whether it's contactless. So that's where the threats are coming from, right? Like e-commerce is on the rise. 50, on average, 50% of the retailers are looking for that from a business perspective in terms of their sales. So you need to think about that too. Secondly, when you look at e-commerce, it's, we have this something called bad bots or e-commerce scalping. So many times we're in need of a product that second in time. Well, these bad actors are exploiting that. They're, they're writing a bot to take all that product from the retailer's inventory. So when another consumer buys it, they can't. And then they, re- they, they sell it at a higher price. That's happening, right? Mobile app hijacking is happening. You know, just look at your own mobile device. How many apps do you have? How many of your favorite retailers apps do you have? You have a lot. Well, the actors are exploiting that because then that's another where the consumers are shopping. So we know the consumer expectation chains. We know e-commerce is kind of also a challenge. But I would say a couple other things to consider too is supply chain. 
So many retailers with stores are closed and inventorying being so precious are relying on a best in class supply chain to get this consumer to the consumer as fast as possible. What that means automation, sensors, you know, cameras, you know, efficiency. So when you put all this new technology, sounds great, real big exploitation when it comes to a vulnerability perspective. Supply chain risks are at an all time high. In fact, with when you look at supply chain, something like cameras and other sensor technologies are a big risk. 57% of IoT devices are susceptible to attack. So that's another area of exploitation for retailers. So those are some of the things I'm seeing retailers, you know, what keep them up at night when it comes yeah. to, you know, the, their organization. That's a good point. How do you think the pandemic has affected this as a whole? Like, how has it accelerated this or made it even worse for retailers? Well, I think it's forced them to accelerate. So when you think about retailers, they're forced to have an e-commerce strategy. They're forced to have new contactless options for their consumers. I think they're forced to have supply chain efficiency because if they don't, a consumer is going to go to the, 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 the retailer choice that has all that innovation. So it mm -hmm. certainly changed the landscape of the digital strategy and also forced the retailers to invest to not only stay afloat, but to survive in this, in this new world that we live in. Yeah. And, and, you know, now I know that like more and more consumers are shopping online. So they, the retailers have to meet them online as well. And we have to meet them online. Security becomes an important topic for conversation. So how are like retailers securing the digital first experience? I think you have to look holistically. So it's no longer just about a firewall. Like I spent, I was talking to a CISO last week of a big box retailer where his number one area of focus was as he was looking to e-commerce, how they look at the cloud security investments. Mm -hmm. If you think about, you know, one example of that is your cloud security investments, consistency policy at scale. The reason why they like cloud is burstability. You can add loads to e-commerce. You can add things quickly so you can, you know, add new innovations, get up to speed, especially with peak season about, about the, around the corner, right? The peak season, Christmas coming up, that's really important to think about, cloud security. Another thing to think about is um, stores and customers coming in with Wi-Fi and customers coming in with, 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 that, with that mobile app platform. Do you have things like endpoint security to think about at scale? Because consumers are shopping and not just online, they're coming at their mobile device. You need end-to-end -end security there too. Thirdly is those store associates, right? We cannot forget that these store associates are no longer in the back office. They're in front of these consumers. They're using a mobile device. They're checking inventory. Having a good end-to-end -end security and zero trust architecture is critical because that could be another vulnerable spot. Trusting anyone is, 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 is really important, important these days. And you can't trust some of these employees because they're our, you know, hourly wage workers that may be just coming in for a season. And there you go, there's an attack. And then the fourth thing I would say is don't forget to think about you know, your entire environment, like even your distribution center supply chain. That's where you see new sensors, new cameras, new, new technology. Anywhere you see IT to OT kind of innovation, another area for you know, like risk so having best-in-class end-to-end security and IoT security is critical. So I would say holistic security across the enterprise. And one thing consistent in the retail vertical that I'm hearing is if you want to move to DevOps and Sec DevOps and have all this automation, all this, you know, all over your, your retail enterprise, having automation is something to think about at scale because retailers have that problem of thousands of devices everywhere. That's a really important thing to think about too. Yeah. Can you go over some of like the most common attacks that you've seen that retailers are challenged with today? Sure. Web skimming is a major attack, right? So anywhere you have online credentials or payment, right? We have credit cards, we have our email addresses, we put in an online platform. That's a big attack because you can skim that URL to get pertinent credential information. You know, that that's on the rise, almost doubled in the last couple of years. Um, I talked about this one too, but e-commerce scalping or bad bots, you know, like these bad actors will exploit the quantity of product from a retailer, sell it at a premium price to other customers. That's on the rise. And then um, I would say just 
Uh, and, you know, we've seen some of the other ones too, like fishing, right? Like we consumers get excited when we get that promotion. Well, guess what? When you get, when you get that promotion, is it a promotion or is it a faulty web page taking you somewhere else? So phishing is on the rise. And then finally, I, I think we can't overlook this one too, is just IoT sensors and customer Wi-Fi is vulnerable to attacks. So mm -hmm. those are some of the words we're seeing attacks too, which is um, IoT vulnerabilities. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I've been a uh, victim of phishing, so I definitely know the pain there. And moving on, I want to shift gears a little bit. I want to move on to the next question. So now that you talked about some of the most common attacks that retailers face, like what should they consider when they think about securing their organization from these types of threats? Yeah, I think we talked about this too, but holistic strategy, right, across your enterprise. So one, as you think about all these applications and SaaS back applications and your entire environment, having good end-to-end -end cloud security is key um, and having all the policies to do that at scale. The second thing to consider is know your areas of the network and know where they're vulnerable areas. So whether it's IoT technologies like cameras, scanners, printers, robots, anywhere you put some new sensor or device, don't forget to think about end-to-end you know, -end IoT security because micro-segmentation and static IPs is yesterday's way of doing it and could be a very difficult. So think about that too. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, think about these customers. These customers coming into your network via mobile app or Wi-Fi sounds great from a customer experience perspective, very big concern when it comes to like a security perspective. So making sure you have end-to-end -end security with that and kind of related to that is having a robust network. So you look at that store, right? Network, network readiness and security goes together. So having like so a great software defined WAN with security is critical because you can have all, you get digital readiness, you have the right bandwidth and you have right security. And then finally associates and employees. Don't forget a zero trust architecture for those workers that are everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like how you point out you have to have a holistic strategy across the board because you can't just have point solutions sitting everywhere. It has to you know, talk to each other and it has to be a very comprehensive security strategy as well. So I do think that's a good way for retailers to go. Hey, Amit, thanks for joining me on today's episode. And everyone else, if you like today's episode, hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a comment as well as visit falsenetworks.com. And for more information, check out the description below and see you all in the next episode.